In this video, we'll look at a pendulum problem. A point mass, 0.6 kilograms, is attached to a 2.8 meter long string to make a simple pendulum. So you have a pendulum like this. It has a mass and it has a length and there's some angle theta. And it says, what's the period of the pendulum? Well, for small angle swing, the angular frequency of the pendulum is the square root of g over l. The t, the period, is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. So that means for this oscillator, this is 2 pi times the square root of l over g. So if you make the length four times longer, you will double the time it takes the pendulum to swing. Putting in the values that we were given, we have 2 pi square root 2.8 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared. Meters cancel, second squared comes up, square root of second squared is the second. And we simply set and punch this into a calculator. So, uh, square root of 2.8 divided by 9.8, and then we multiply that by 2, and multiply that by pi, we come with 3.36 seconds. So that's the answer to part A. Part B asks, if the pendulum is pulled back to an angle of pi over 10 radians and released, what is the maximum speed of the pendulum? Now this can be solved by energy analysis. Um, if we look at the pendulum, when it's fallen all the way down to the lowest distance here, that's what's going to have the maximum speed. Now the length of the pendulum string L is the same all the way through the problem as it swung around. Before, however, the pendulum was at a particular height, this height. The potential energy the pendulum has, mgh, was converted into one half mv squared as it fell down. We need to find this height. Now we know this angle here is theta, so this distance here is L cosine theta. So this height is the distance L minus L cosine theta. So it's L times 1 minus cosine theta. All right, let me move down a little further and write that up. So B we have E initially being purely potential MGH or which is MGL cosine theta is converted into purely kinetic one half M V max squared and uh, I'm sorry this is not correct this is not H, let me put the correct one minus cosine theta, missed that. So therefore, G times L times one minus cosine theta is equal to one half V max squared, or V max is the square root of 2gl 1 minus cosine of theta and we put in our values here and you have to be a little careful in dealing with the cosine function make sure that you're in the correct mode of radians so we have the cosine of pi divided by 10 and that's 0.951 
multiply that by minus 1 and then add it to 1 and then multiply it by your 2.8 and you find that this distance here that it dropped was 0.137 meters. You then multiply that by 9.8, multiply that by 2, and take the square root and you get 1.64 meters per second. Now you might have realized that that's interesting. 2GH that squared 2GH, that's like a falling body. The pendulum is a falling body. And whether or not it fell straight down or it follows a different path, whatever that path is, it doesn't matter as far as the work done by gravity on the ball because it is a conservative force. So any path, the curved path, the straight path and an over path, the over and the straight down path, the same amount of work would have been done and there would have been the same change in kinetic energy. This is getting back to chapter 6 in Giancoli. Alright, that completes this problem.